Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And uh, for our Daily Word today, we're going into the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. I want to share verse 29 with you. And then let's let's talk just for a bit uh, today about uh, Peter's Messiah and our surrender. Would you hear this word from, uh, from the Lord? Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah. Now, it's really significant that this uh, declaration of, of Peter, that Jesus is the Messiah, that this takes place in Caesarea Philippi. Uh, this, this was, uh, I believe, intentional on Jesus' part because Caesarea Philippi was the site of, uh, of a, a fairly well-known um, pagan worship site. Uh, there, there would have been worship of many gods. As a matter of fact, um, primarily this was uh, to this, this god Pan, and there would have been all sorts of, um, let, let's call them ceremony, but uh, debauchery of every, every kind. And there were other, um, other gods, pagan gods, that were worshipped there. And it's quite intentional to, to say in a place like that, uh, what are people saying about me? Who do they say I am? But in the face of all of these other gods, all of these other options, uh, Roman power, uh, pagan worship, who do you say that I am? And this declaration was given to Peter by God. It was, this truth was revealed to Peter from God. And of course, it is true. But what we see as we read on is that, that Peter has a very particular idea of how Jesus should be the Messiah what he should do, what he should be like. Because Jesus begins telling them at this point, we read in the scripture, Jesus begins telling them that he will be tortured and that he will be killed by the religious leaders, but that he will be raised on the third day. He's he's very clear about this. And in verse 32, we we read this um, (laughs) really incredible Um, incredible turn of events. As he talked openly about this, that is about his uh, his arrest, his torture, his uh, crucifixion, resurrection, as he talked about this with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus, (laughs) um, I don't know where you're getting this from, but this is not the plan. This is not a good idea. This is not how I pictured things going. We're not doing this. How could you even talk that way? But then, as you read on a little further still, Jesus reprimands Peter in turn. He tells him, get behind me, Satan. Not that Peter has become Satan, but that he is, he is opening the door of temptation from Satan for Jesus to get off mission, to not complete the mission of salvation. Peter, he says, is, is only seeing from a worldly perspective. Uh, it seems to me that he doesn't understand what God's doing, that he doesn't understand how the Messiah would be salvation. He, I'm quite sure, was picturing something more political, something more uh, milita- militarily that was going to be taking place. And, and so he didn't, he's only looking from that physical, worldly perspective. He doesn't, he doesn't understand what God, uh, what God is doing. And so Jesus then is going to move right into explaining what it means to follow him. That following him means taking up the cross. That is dying to self, giving up our own way to follow Jesus. Uh, th- th- there is um, there there is no making Jesus into who we want him to be, what we want him to be about, what sort of anointed king we want him to be. Uh, that that is a sort of a cardboard cutout of Jesus. If we make up our own, if we want the real Jesus, if we want Jesus, the living Lord, it will be as he is, and it will be on, on his terms. There's no being ashamed of who he is and what he's done and the truth that he reveals. There's, 
no, no being ashamed of the cross of, of Jesus. This is who he is, and he calls us to receive him. And, and what it means to receive him is to surrender to him, to give our lives over to him, period, full stop, end of sentence, that we would be truly his. We're giving up our own way, meaning I understand that my life is no longer my own, that my will and desires are now, they're now submitted uh, to the will and the way uh, of the Lord, that my life is now about, about him and, and where it is that he would lead me and, and how it is that he would transform me. And, and truly, as we submit our lives to him, what we find, as Jesus makes very clear here in the passage, when we give our lives to him, we're not trying to save our will, our way, life like we think that it should be, but we submit, we surrender, we give our lives to Christ. What we find is that in doing so, in laying down our life for Jesus Christ, we find what is truly life. It's quite a thing. It's very counterintuitive. Our, our first response from a worldly perspective, just like Peter is, hey, hands off my life. I've got this thing figured out. I know where I'm going, what I want to do. But Jesus says, no, no, um, I, I need you to trust me. I'm calling you to follow me. But in order to do that, you will have to give up your own way, take up your cross, and actually follow. And friends, when we do, we find in him what is truly life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that he would keep you.